All right, what's going on, Jason? Uh, I got your question. As you can see, I started to respond to it uh, by typing something out, but I decided actually showing you and walking you through the KuCoin back office would just be more helpful. So uh, for those of you watching, and Jason asked, said, thanks a lot for your video. Can you explain how KuCoin pays you on the lending? My lending shows I have 1700 USD in realized earnings. However, my total account balance is not increased at all. My deposit amount is exactly the same as the amount it says I currently hold. Many thanks. So let's go ahead. He has a couple things in this uh, question. So let's go ahead and answer them one by one. First, can you explain how KuCoin pays you on the lending? Well, let's go through the process. And I'm going to be a little detailed just for the people that's watching. Uh, and they follow through. So first, uh, you would make your deposit. Now, if you follow... Uh, my guidance from a previous video where I said go through Coinbase so that you can avoid the fees. Uh, you will go through Coinbase. They are going to launch USDT support soon, but uh, if you're doing it today and it's not available yet, you would go and buy USDC and then you would transfer that USDC over to KuCoin. That completely avoids the fees. USDC is free to purchase on Coinbase and it's just the transaction fee when you want to transfer it. So you would transfer it over to KuCoin and it would be in your main account. But uh, during the time, USDT was lending out a lot and we'll kind of address that a little bit too. Well, I'll address it now. USDT is really not a good thing to lend uh, anymore. Uh, and as we see, I'm going to close this tab out so you guys can see everything I'm doing. So as you see, if we go to lend here uh, and we look at USDT, you see the rates of 14%, nowhere near the 54 and 40, whatever it was when I made the last video. And that is because KuCoin has created a new uh, program, I guess you would call it, for leveraged tokens. They rolled this out and it allows people to trade on margin without getting any loans. <laughs> and there are no liquidation calls or anything like that. So you know, why would people use this? So this kind of puts us uh, lenders at a disadvantage because, you know, the rates have gone down significantly because the demand just simply isn't there. Now, going back here to the first question explaining how it works. So you will uh, go here or be in your main account. Then you would transfer it over to your trading account and swap out your USDT. You would convert it to USDT. It will be in your trading account. Then, then you would transfer it back to your main account. All right, and then you will click Lend. And then here, uh, you could do Auto Lend. I love the Auto Lend feature because, as we know, cryptocurrency works 24-7, unlike the stock market. So me personally, I would do Auto Lend. And I would put $1 here for the reserved amount. It has to have some amount in the reserve. So the amount that you're putting here is not what's actually lending out, but what is being reserved in your account. So you put a dollar and you have all your total assets here, and then you would tell it the minimum daily rate. Now, here's the cool thing. The minimum daily rate is not what it's going to do. It's just that's just the minimum. It will always try to get you the highest rate possible. And to show you, let's go look at Unsettled, and we can see that these have passed in the past couple of days. Uh, let's see. This was on the... Oh, that's a maturity date. So we have to look at the order history here. Uh, those were canceled and that was executed on the 23rd for uh, 0.068. So we see the, the rates were dropping, but it was still giving me uh, higher rates than what I put in for the minimum. I believe I, my minimum was 0.06 at the time. And it was just finding me all of the loans, executing loans way higher than that. And if we go a few more days out... Uh, this is during the time where I had my minimum at one at point one three five, I believe. Well, I had at point one three. Anyway, I just wanted to show that you will get way more than what you put in there. Well, as we can see, it was um, my minimum. I think it was point one because we have point one two right here, and it did point uh, one three nine, one three five, one three eight, and there were some other loans that issued. Uh, before then, I was trying to find them where I mean, I got as high there. You go well, 0.194, and my minimum was at one at 0.13 during that time, and it was getting me loans at almost 0.2. So it really 
works really well, um, their auto limb feature. And I just wanted to point that out. So I would highly recommend doing that because these loans pretty much last about a day on average and sometimes just a few hours. So uh, always do the auto lend. Um, so anyway, so that's what you would do. And then you would click, like for me, what I would do, I have $2,000 in there. I would do this and I would say, okay, my lowest, I would say it's 0 0.03. And then I would enable auto lend and then confirm it. And there we go. Now the thing about auto lend is when you have, when you execute that, you come here and you look at your open orders, there's generally nothing there. Um, typically those open orders pop up once you disable the auto lend. So that's how you execute and put your loans out there. Now, when someone says, hey, okay, I'll take the loan from you. Let's go look at unsettled. So somebody borrowed $202 or 202 USD for me. Um, and we can see here, this is my accrued interest of uh, 43, it's basically point, it's 43 and a half cents at a daily interest rate of 0.07 and a term of 28 days. So whenever this person is done with this loan, they can repay it before the 28 days and generally no one holds the thing that long. Uh, so once they pay it out, it, it then becomes settled so they pay back the amount that they borrowed plus any interest that has accrued now we could look here and we can see this person borrowed sixty six hundred dollars you see they had it for no time because the interest was only uh point was 18.9 cents all right it was no interest at all um and that's what they paid back they paid this is their principal and this was their repayment now you may say okay chris I see there's a difference here. It says the interest was 18.9, but they only paid you 16. Well, KuCoin takes their 15% fee out of that. All right, and just to keep them honest, because I have never actually done the math, let's say here that 0.1893516 minus 15% uh, equals. 0.1609 there we go so their math is correct they did it properly they took their 15 percent fee so that is my repayment and then that goes back into your lending pot right and it's just going to reinvest all of that so that's how it works unless you tell it obviously otherwise you have this all done manually and when you go to my lendings it'll tell you your realized profit now your realized profit First, I want to let's talk about why there's two different numbers here. There's realized profit here, then there's realized profit here. Up here is going to give you everything in Bitcoin. And then uh, here it's going to give you everything in the coin that you're actually lending out. So this is why you may experience some discrepancies. So let's look at the realized profit for USDT. It says it's around 101.44. Um, and my accrued interest is 38.54. So the accrued interest is what I have not been paid out. This is what I'm due. And the realized profit is what I have already been paid out. Now, what Jason is saying is that his realized profit is $1,700, which, by the way, good for you. Uh, and his deposit is showing whatever he deposited, but it's not showing the $1,700. Now, let's try to investigate some reasons why that may be. First of all, if you go back to Lend, uh, make sure you have you disable Auto Lend. Make sure that's not on. So uh, generally, it does it every hour, and it probably has not executed anything for me yet. But if I go here to disable Auto Lend, um, let's say this been have been running for like an hour or so, there will be open orders here that have not, maybe not been accepted yet. Let's see if there's. No, it didn't execute anything because it does it every hour. Uh, so there will be open orders here. And if there are open orders there, they, they won't show up in your balance. Uh, so you want to disable that and make sure there are no open orders there. If there are, cancel them. Then what you want to do is go up here and click Assets. And here under Assets is going to show you everything. Um, 
And I also got to keep in mind, if you have other things like when we when I first started this video, I believe this was like 21,000 and some change. Now it's 20,000 because we know cryptocurrency moves. Uh, actually, no. See, I take that back. And this is the problem. So we see assets overview. This is 20,000. 800 some dollars but we at the beginning of this video this was 21,000 and some change so what we want to do is come up here and click this little notch here and then jumps up to $21,685 because it doesn't include all the sub accounts the accounts here the main account is your lending account the trading account is whatever you have just in stocks um, then you have your margin account this is mainly stuff you borrow you have your futures account, your pool X account. I don't really know what this is. I haven't gotten into it, but okay, I see it's probably something that has to do with staking. Uh, and then you have your sub account here, which mine is for uh, using the uh, trading bot. So once you've included all these assets here, you want to take a look at your uh, assets overview. And then keep in mind, again, it's in Bitcoin. So you just kind of really want to make sure it's around what you deposit it should be a little bit more than what you deposited if all you've done is just transferred it to the main account and then done loans if you've done anything else you have to factor in market fluctuations but if it's all just under lending then uh, it should be more than what you have put in there a little bit more than what you put in there uh, if you don't see that what i would recommend doing is just kind of waiting a few days give them like three to five days uh, just to make sure that all of your loans have settled completely. Uh, I know with stocks, I use TD Ameritrade as a brokerage firm, and sometimes it takes like up to a week for all the funds to settle. Now, TD Ameritrade is more seasoned than KuCoin, so they are able to still show me you know, what I'm due, and I can still trade and everything like that, and it just settles the stuff after the fact. But KuCoin may not be that advanced. They certainly haven't been around as long as TD Ameritrade. So give them a few days. See if the money shows up. If it doesn't, then you want to reach out to customer service. Uh, and I would just scroll down and um, go to support center. You can go to frequently asked questions. Uh, and you could also submit a ticket. And let me just go back to your question to make sure I've answered everything. Um, yep. <sighs> Yeah, so um, so that's pretty much it, man. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if it wasn't or you have any more questions, just, you know, go ahead and ask them in the comments and I'll be sure to try to, you know, bring some clarity to, to things to the best of my abilities. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching my video and I will see you guys next time.